Hello, my name is Denise Eide. I'm the author of Uncovering the Logic of English. Tonight we're going to talk about teaching the phonogram sounds. Before we begin, we need to know what is a phonogram. Phonogram is actually derived from the Greek words phono meaning sound and gram meaning picture. A phonogram, therefore, is a sound picture. This is a picture of the sounds a, a, and a. So often we think of it only as the letter A. However, it's actually a picture of the three sounds A, A, and A. This is a picture of the sound B. This is a picture of the sound OI. Notice OI is written with two letters. Because English has 44 sounds and only 26 written letters, many of the phonograms are written with more than one letter. These are called multi-letter phonograms. When we teach the phonograms, it is very important not to pair them with pictures. Pictures create an oversimplification. For example, often when we teach the letter A, we pair it with an apple, telling the student that the A says A ah, as an apple. However, A also says A as an age and A as in water. It's important when teaching the phonograms to create a direct memory link with the phonogram and its sound rather than an indirect link. Many programs try to help the student by pairing a picture with the phonogram. For example, this picture that you see on the slide. The student is to think that the letter A reminds them of the word apple, and that apple begins with the sound A, ah, therefore A says A. Ah. It is much better if the student learns that this is a picture of the sounds A, ah, A, ah, and A, ah, and be able to recall that instantaneously without any indirect links. When we teach students, it's important to begin with the lowercase letters rather than the uppercase letters. This is because 95 to 98 percent of all that we read and write is lowercase letters. Uppercase letters are only used at the beginning of sentences and the beginning of proper nouns. In addition, lowercase letters have greater variety in size and shape and height, and therefore they're much simpler to read. If you compare the two sentences on the screen, you'll notice that it is easier to read a sentence written in lowercase letters than it is to read a sentence written in uppercase letters. When we teach students, we should begin by teaching the sounds, not the letter names. So often we so overemphasize the letter names that a student will look at the word dog and say D-O-G. However, D-O-G tells the student nothing about how to read the word. If we teach them the sounds d, a, g, however, all they need to do is blend those sounds together to read dog. I actually recommend beginning with the lowercase letters and teaching their sounds. Then teach the students the uppercase letters and teach them the names and then teach them how those fit together. It is very important when teaching to begin by teaching all the sounds for each phonogram. My favorite example of this is the letter S. So often we teach this as only saying s, as in sand, sick, list, and hiss. What about is, his, was, and resent? In these words it's saying z. Many students will misread these words as is and hiss and on and on, and they will do this again and again and again, applying exactly what you have taught them that the letter S says s. I call these students logical literal students. They're our nation's future engineers and scientists. They apply what they learn logically and literally to each situation, and they either prove that it works or it doesn't work. Now, when we include the plurals, such as tables, chairs, cars, and toys, we discover that S actually says Z 70% of the time. Well, many people ask me, why do some students not struggle? I have a theory about this. I call those students who don't struggle with this intuitive students. If you take a moment and you say the sound s and z, you will notice that they are said in the exact same place in the mouth. The only difference between them is one of the sounds the voice is on and one of the sounds the voice is off. They are an unvoiced voiced pair. When we when a student comes across the word is and misreads it as is, the teacher will often say that's an exception. It says is. 
Those intuitive students never notice that there's a difference between the two sounds. The approximation of the sound s is enough for them to go on reading and decoding. Our logical literal students, however, from very young ages, four and five, have already noticed that s and z are different sounds, and they will apply it exactly as you have taught them. Simply by teaching them both sounds, we're able to eliminate many, many, many bogus exceptions and help students succeed. Another example of this is the phonogram CH. In school, I was taught that this says ch, as in chin, chime, and champion. But what about school, chorus, and Christmas? You'll notice in this, these words, it's saying k. And in chef, machine, and Chicago, it's saying sh. CH actually says three sounds, ch, k, and sh. And the words where it says k are not an exception, they're Greek-based words. And the words where it says sh are not exceptions either, they're French-based words. When teaching, it is important that the phonogram cards have no additional pictures, that we teach the students a direct memory link from the sound picture to the sound, and that we teach all of the sounds in the order of frequency.